We will tell you the nine assets you must invest in to get rich. The last asset is not discussed by many. So watch this video till the end. Now let's start. Number one, income generating stocks. Dividend stocks are shares that provide regular payouts to shareholders at set intervals. Dividend payments can be received either in the form of shares of stock or as cash. Imagine a company providing a 5% dividend yield, with its stock maintaining a consistent value of $20 per share throughout the year. An individual holding 100 shares has the choice to either cash in at $1 per share or reinvest to acquire 5 additional shares throughout the year. Investing in dividend stocks offers a fantastic opportunity to grow your wealth steadily over time. Absolutely, selecting stocks solely based on their dividend yield is not advisable. Additionally, considering their price-to-earnings ratio, price-to-book ratio, debt-to-equity ratio, and price or earnings-to-growth PEG ratio is crucial. Number 2. Exchange-Traded Funds ETFs. Investing in stocks means purchasing them individually, which can be a lengthy, risky, and costly endeavor. Consider a different, safer strategy. Invest in funds. Exchange-traded funds ETFs, offer a convenient way to access a diverse range of stocks all within a single portfolio. ETFs are designed to follow a range of indexes, assets, and commodities. Explore a diverse range of investment options, including healthcare ETFs, telecommunications ETFs, construction ETFs, currency funds, and equity funds, among others. Additionally, there are ETFs that follow indexes, such as Vanguard's Dollar VTI ETF. Investors have the opportunity to buy and sell ETFs through reputable stockbrokers such as Schwab and Fidelity. Their prices fluctuate continuously throughout the day. The majority of ETFs are managed passively, which indicates that there are no active fund managers making frequent asset adjustments. Typically, these are automated. However, there are notable exceptions, such as ARKK, which is actively managed. If you want to know more amazing assets to get rich, then subscribe to our channel and also press the like button. Number three, index funds. Index funds are designed for passive management, closely following specific benchmarks. The key distinction between ETFs and index funds lies in the fact that they are traded according to their price at the close of the trading day. Index funds typically offer low expenses and the potential for impressive long-term returns. Number four, mutual funds. Conversely, a mutual fund typically features active management with fund managers regularly adjusting the portfolio by buying and selling assets. Index funds and ETFs aim to mirror indexes, whereas mutual funds strive to outperform them. However, this approach isn't always effective. Additionally, mutual funds often incur higher fees due to the fund manager's share of the profits. When investing in a mutual fund, it's essential to examine the expense ratio, as it indicates the portion of the fund allocated to growth. Number 5. Savings Accounts Investing in FDIC-insured savings accounts for growth may seem counterintuitive, especially given the prevailing low interest rates. Currently, the top interest rates are ranging from 3% APY to 4% APY, which is impressive. Meanwhile, the market's lowest interest rates are falling below 0.05% APY, a situation that's simply unacceptable. However, Savings accounts that offer higher interest rates, commonly referred to as high-yield savings accounts, HYSAs, can still generate modest returns. Imagine parking $25,000 in a high-yield savings account with a 0.4% APY. By the end of the year, you could expect to earn around $100 in interest. 
That's based on the premise that no additional contributions are made and that the interest rate remains steady at 0.4%. It's important to note that U.S. savings accounts have a limit on transactions. According to Regulation D, banking customers are limited to six withdrawals or transfers within a monthly billing cycle. It can be quite annoying when you often require access to your funds. However, it has the potential to cut down on expenses, allowing you to keep more money in your bank account rather than spending it all. Number 6. Certificates of Deposit, CDs One of the most frustrating aspects of savings accounts is their variable interest rates, which often take a nosedive when the Federal Reserve cuts rates. CDs provide banking customers the opportunity to secure higher interest rates for predetermined durations. Imagine securing a six-month CD that offers an impressive APY of 3.8%. One of the benefits of utilizing CDs is the opportunity to secure a higher interest rate while keeping your funds untouched for a predetermined duration. One drawback is that your funds will be tied up until the term concludes. While it's possible to withdraw your funds and terminate the contract, be aware that doing so will result in significant penalties and could mean forfeiting all the interest you've earned if you access your money too soon. CDs offer a secure option for those concerned about falling interest rates and who intend to keep their funds untouched for a predetermined duration. If you seek greater liquidity, consider exploring money market accounts. They typically offer higher interest rates compared to savings accounts while providing more convenient access to your funds than CDs. Number 7. Annuities An annuity represents a strategic long-term investment opportunity. An insurance provider issues this type of asset. Purchasing an annuity allows you to enjoy a consistent stream of income over time. This solution is crafted to ensure a lifetime of income. Annuities are categorized into two distinct groups. Intermediate annuities. This annuity requires a single lump sum payment that is then distributed into regular payments over a specified duration. Purchasing an intermediate annuity allows you to secure guaranteed income immediately. Postponed variable. Deferred annuities allow you to make a one-time payment or regular premium contributions, ensuring you receive guaranteed payments in the future. Number 8. Securities. Corporations and governments frequently turn to bond issuance as a strategic method for raising capital. Purchasing a bond means acquiring debt from an issuer who commits to returning the principal amount along with interest. Bonds typically offer a stable investment option as they are generally less prone to fluctuations compared to stocks. On the flip side, you might find yourself waiting for the bond certificate to mature before you can cash out. If you're in need of liquid cash, exercise caution when considering investments in bonds. The most prevalent varieties of bonds are corporate bonds. Businesses often issue corporate bonds to investors as a strategic move to secure capital for expanding their operations or financing mergers and acquisitions. Treasury bonds are government-issued securities designed to fund debt obligations. These bonds represent some of the lowest risk options available for investors. High-yield bonds often referred to as junk bonds, are generally issued by companies that carry a greater risk of default. Consequently, they often come with elevated interest rates. Municipal bonds. Municipal bonds, commonly referred to as munis, are debt securities issued by local governments to generate capital for essential projects such as bridges, roads, and railroad stations. Number 9. Properties in Real Estate Purchasing a home for personal residence is fundamentally different from engaging in real estate investment. Discover some of the premier real estate opportunities worth your attention. Rental properties are real estate investments that you acquire, such as a single-family home or a multi-family dwelling, 
with the goal of leasing them to tenants. These properties have the potential to create ongoing income with each rent payment received from tenants. Vacation towns offer enticing short-term rental properties, while towns and cities feature appealing long-term rental options. Consider renting out your current space on Airbnb. Commercial real estate encompasses a variety of properties, including office spaces, industrial centers, retail storefronts, and substantial residential buildings such as condominiums and apartment complexes. Now, watch the video appearing on the right side to know the good money habits you could adopt to become rich. These money habits can really make you rich so do check this video. And also subscribe to our channel to know more amazing and new financial tips and secrets.